The by-election for the Ayawa Sul West Wagon constituency turned violent today, leading to injuries to several persons and the withdrawal of the National Democratic Congress from the exercise. The violent scenes began after gunfire was heard at the La Baalish in Presby polling station, but calm soon returned as residents used the over 130 polling stations in the constituency to cast their votes. City News' Hans Ajiman chronicles events that have characterized the election. The unusual heavy security, including supposed operatives from national security at the La Baoleshi Presby Center, was enough to have made the center an interest point in the by-election. For many, their presence was intimidating, if not unnecessary. This was a sharp contrast from observations at other polling stations with no more than three security personnel each. The posture of the alleged security personnel did not suggest any actions towards the election as they moved away from the polling center. But about two hours after voting had started at Baoleshi School, gunshots were heard from behind the polling center, where the strange-looking security men had run to. It was followed up with a confrontation between the alleged security operatives and some sympathizers of the NDC. Following the continuous unrest caused by the situation, the NDC's leadership hierarchy, in consultation with the parliamentary candidate, pulled out of the election. Uh, we don't think that we are in a war zone. But this by-election has been turned into a war zone. We are peaceful, loving people. And we are law-abiding party. We cannot subject any of our members to danger because of elections. In the circumstances, I have conferred with the parliamentary candidate and the leadership of the NDC, we have no option than to withdraw from the ongoing exercise. A counter-press conference by the New Patriotic Party accused the NDC of orchestrating the disturbances that happened earlier today. Yabuabia Samoa is the MPP's Director of Communications and he addressed the press conference. We believe that the grand scheme to change Ghana's electoral reputation has failed. And it has failed at death. And that the NDC leadership has behaved recklessly, in a cowardly manner. They appear not to have been prepared for the election. This was an orchestrated attempt which has failed. We let's get to Parliament and the Speaker of the August House, Professor Michael Quay, has given the executive arm of government till Tuesday, February 5, to advise the House on when the long-awaited right to information bill should take effect as law. This came up on the floor of Parliament following deliberations on the contentious transitional clause to the bill, which proposes that RTI commences 12 months after it is assented to, as uh, sponsored by... Suhum MP Frederick Oparianza. There is more in the following report. The transitional clause is the only outstanding provision that stands in the way of the passage of the RTI bill. The Speaker, in a bid to get the House to pass the bill without delay, issued a fiat to the Executive to come clear on its intentions for the commencement date of the RTI bill by next Tuesday. As we talk, we don't know the past capacity of the executive in this connection. Then without reference to them, we say, no, 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 you won't have money to do it, therefore wait for one year. We are not seized with the capacity to say that to the executive. Maybe they can do it tomorrow morning. We don't know. Nevertheless, again, we will give the executive appropriate time up to Tuesday to dialogue with this honorable house and consider whether they are in a position to uh, uh, enforce this immediately or not. Now in some other news, the Economic and Organized Crime Office, Ioko, has arrested and detained two persons for removing 10 air conditioners from the premises of Xylophone Media at East Ligon here in Accra. According to the Ioko, the two attempted removing the air conditioners upon publication of the court order the office obtained to freeze assets of the troubled Men's Gold Ghana Limited and its affiliate companies pending resolution of the company's crisis. Jacqueline Avutri is the head of public affairs at Ioko. Wednesday, 30th January 2018, 
the Economic and Organized Crime Office had intelligence that some persons were at the premises of xylophone media located at number 40 Lagos Avenue, opposite Mensvik Hotel, East Lagos, and they were removing items from the offices. Officers of Yoko swiftly moved and effected the arrest of two persons at the office of xylophone media. Now moving to the northern region, due to a lingering land dispute between the Barishi and Fazihini communities, both in the North Namton district, school children at Barishi have refused to attend a school that is built at Fazini to serve surrounding communities. The students rather walk for an hour to attend school at Zeng, a distant community. Our regional correspondent Maxwell Zook has more. Year old from one student, Adam Hadija, walks a distance of approximately seven kilometers, about an hour from Barche to Zheng, both in the Nantong district of the northern region, to attend school. Hadija says that is her daily routine. Interestingly, there is a school close to where Khadija lives at Barche. Hadija isn't the only one. Almost all the children in this community travel the same distance to attend Zhang Junior High School instead of Fajini JSS. Soon, I find out about a lingering territorial dispute between the two communities over who controls the Wadawa trees in the area. The issue which caused a decade-long communal conflict between the two communities was resolved in 2015. Yet, the people here are yet to rescind their decision not to enroll their wars at Fajini GSS. Let's get some other stories. In the family of Beatrice Japan, a 23-year-old girl whose lower lip was reportedly bitten by one Clara Atemperi, a health worker, is demanding justice for the victim. Though the biting incident happened on the 18th of January this year, the Kwesimin team police is yet to commence prosecution on the matter. City News' Akwese Jianim visited the West Ridge residence of Beatrice after her plastic surgery at Kolebu house is where Beatrice, the victim, and her predator, Clara, all lives together with the boyfriend who became the subject of contention for them to fight over. When I got to the house, Beatrice and the auntie, Grace Honey, who takes care of her, had arrived from the Kolebu teaching hospital after a successful plastic surgery. The auntie tells me they have been to the Kwesimintin police station on two occasions already just to make sure Clara the suspected mouth biter is punished severely. 